So hello, everyone. This is another episode of Fire, Breathe, and Rob. Thank you so much for listening. If you haven't already, uh, please subscribe to our YouTube podcast. Definitely like, subscribe, and also hit the bell if you're listening to us on another platform, because we are on multiple platforms online. Uh, please also subscribe to those platforms. Everything is free. Obviously, we know uh, it's tough times for everybody right now, so please subscribe. Today, with coronavirus and all this political garbage going on in our country, we're going to switch gears today and move to somebody who I learned about her book, and I'm really interested in hearing what she's saying about this book. And this is Heather Chavez, and she did write her new book, and you can see it in the background. If you look to the, well, on my side, it's to the right. <laughs> if you're looking from another way, I don't know. But anyways, uh, it is No Bad Deed by Heather Chavez. She's joining us right now. Heather, thanks so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to speak with us today. Thank you very much for having me. All right, so we got a lot to talk about in little time, so I want to go right into this. So we talked about the book, and the book came out right when the pandemic was hitting. With that said, how did that hurt? Did it hurt the book sales? Did it hurt kind of your outlook as far as, because I've, I've talked to a lot of people that have, you know, released a book uh, throughout the time of the pandemic, and they talk about uh, how hard it is really sometimes to get that word out. It's a lot of Zoom calls, a lot of Zoom interviews. Uh, and some people watch it and some people don't. It's not like you're going to your bookstore and doing book talks and stuff like that. So with that said, how hard was it with the book being released as far as the hardcover copy during the time of the pandemic just hitting where no one was going in stores, people were afraid and people were afraid to even go outside at times. It was extremely hard, especially as a debut author, um, mm. because um, some of my favorite authors are Lisa Gardner, Harlan Coben. People know who they are. They don't know who Heather Chavez is yet. Um, maybe they will now. But um, so it's hard for them to find my book. Um, you know, events were canceled, especially in the beginning stages. They weren't um, rescheduled, virtual wasn't as robust as it was now. Mm -hmm. So it was really challenging to connect with readers, especially since um, that is my favorite part of, of being a writer is, is reader response and connecting with people. And so it, it was, a, it was definitely a huge challenge. The benefit to it though, was that um, I, turn to social media a lot more than I normally would have. And before I got the um, book deal, I didn't even have an Instagram. And Instagram is now my favorite way to connect with readers. I actually have a, a book club via an Instagram group um, in, a, in a couple of weeks. And that's something I've, I've, I've met with writers clubs like a few hours away that I might not have been able to make if it wasn't virtual. Um, I've one of my closest writing friends that I've met in this journey has lives in Germany, and so it, yeah. So it's it's nice um, to connect more globally and also um, be able to to communicate with people you might not have otherwise been able to. Um, but it was definitely a challenge. It's it's and it's still a challenge getting getting the word out. And so, also, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I can cut I that part out. Right. Also say that when there's when there is something like a pandemic going on, it's very challenging to say, "Hey, buy my book." Um, so that's also been a challenge, especially you know I've had loved ones who've who've been affected by COVID, and and I also, like I mentioned, um, work for a healthcare organization. So I've seen up hand, you know, up close how how devastating this can be. And so to, to, to say, hey, I, I'm Heather by my book has been a challenge to get to that place where I'm like, it's okay to say that people, people want to read and know about stuff too. And, you know, no, I agree a hundred percent. And I do want to do a deep dive into the book now. So I was told that you got the idea for this book and you can correct me if I'm wrong in an elementary school parking lot. Is that correct? Yeah, I was actually picking my daughter up from after school care okay. and we witnessed um, a, a teenager, probably about a 14 year old boy, um, and he, all of a sudden he was attacked by wow. two other 
boys about his same age and it was sudden and it was violent and it was over really quickly. Um, I didn't really have a chance to react. I was still processing, should I call 911? Should I get out of the car? What should I do? Um, but I didn't have a chance to react. And so then my writer brain the rest of the day was thinking, what should I have done? And of course that evolved to what if, you know, what if, what happened before? What, what caused those other boys to feel that this was something they wanted to do? Um, you know, and would I have behaved differently if my daughter wasn't in the car? Um, those, which inspired the first sentence of the book and, and the plot ultimately. We talk about thrillers in general and me, I'm a thriller guy. I, you know, I'm not a romance guy. <laughs> I'm not a, you know, I'm more of an action guy, thriller. I want to know what's going on. I want to be interested and not know what's going to happen next. So with, you know, somebody like me that likes thrillers, likes not knowing what's going to happen next. Is that how you are? Is that why you were interested in writing this topic? Or was it just basically because of the situation that you were in as being in the car in that elementary school parking lot and seeing these two kids, you know, beat the crap out of each other in plain English? I um, actually wrote three and a half what I call practice books prior to No Bad Deed that I kind of abandoned and, you know, just kind of left behind. Mm -hmm. um, and it, they were all thrillers as well. Um, and I think in addition to being inspired by Dean Koontz um, and that book that I read and every book of his since, um, I've also, you know, worked as a journalist. And so I saw a lot of those stories about people doing horrible things to people they profess to, you know, to care about. And so that has always inspired me to, you know, seeing these stories and wondering why on this particular day did somebody decide to do that um, to somebody, like I said, that they, they were supposed to love. And so um, that kind of also fed into the dark side of my imagination. Can you tell the viewers, Heather, a small synopsis of the book before we even dive deeper into this? Uh, of course. It's um, about a veterinarian and a mother of two named Cassie, and she's driving home from a long 12-hour shift at the clinic, and she comes across this man and this woman fighting, and it turns vicious, and she... As, as I did, she says, should I call 911? What should I do? She calls 911, but then she gets out of her car. And um, there are reasons she gets out of her car, um, but it, she ends up able to save the, the victim. But then as the attacker is leaving, he warns her, you know, let her die and I'll let you live. And then the very next day, her husband disappears um, while trick-or-treating with their young daughter. Wow. So. So she has to decide, are they connected? Are they random events? Right. So when doing research for this book, did you look at similar stories? You know, obviously you went through that situation with the 14 year old kids fighting, but did you look at similar stories that have happened like this? Because this seems like a story that could happen on like 48 hours or something like that. You know, I really didn't until... Mm. It sounds, it sounds odd, but I actually did more research after um, and read some really interesting articles about the bystander effect and, and what, you know, are people likely to um, act in these situations because um, a lot of people were, were like, oh, I don't think I would have gotten out of the car. And I think we all have to ask ourselves, would we have gotten out of the car? And I think the answer is different for every person. Um, but I did did afterwards, um, when I was talking to people, you'd mentioned earlier that it was something that could happen to everybody. And I was amazed at how many people said, oh, I remember this one time I saw this, or I came upon this scene. And, and um, even after I wrote the book, um, I was driving home one day and I actually saw a very similar scene um, not too far from where I live where a man was attacking a woman. And it's like, wow. you don't realize that until your eyes are open and you're like, oh, wow, this this does happen a lot. Um, and well, maybe not a lot, but it happens. And so, right. you know, right. what would you do in that situation? So obviously you're from California. Is that why you chose the setting as in California or was there 
uh, more significance as we do read the book about the setting being in California in general? For my first book, I really wanted, well, my not including the practice books, um, I wanted it to really be grounded in where I live. Um, and like the road that Cassie drives is a road that I drive frequently, you know. So I wanted to be able to really touch base with, with you know, the, get all the senses, you know, and, and that's something that's harder to do if you haven't been there. Um, and so um, I was kind of inspired by that. And I was also inspired because I live in wine country and it's, um, you know, very beautiful place, but it's also a place where, where there, you know, things happen. <laughs> um, and I liked the idea of setting it in a place that is known for, you know, being, you know, wine country, touristy, um, but then also people live here and people get assaulted here. And um, I'm, I'm a really good tourism ad. <laughs> what was the thought about on the short list of Cassie well, as far as her husband disappearing? Was there anything to, was that, you know, obviously it being Halloween, was it they thought that she was going, that he rather was going trick-or-treating? Was it that maybe he could have gotten into a car accident? Maybe he, you know, fell and broke his leg. You know, you never know how people can disappear. Uh, cell phones die. Uh, <laughs> and uh, there's places where there was no signals for cell phones. But what was on that short list for Cassie about the husband's disappearance as far as it being October and near Halloween in general? I really wanted to tap into where she was in her marriage um, as far as they, they have what she believes is a strong marriage. And she comes to question that as the book progresses. Um, and at first she's, you know, thinking, oh, we're, we have some problems right now. We're a little distant, but, but he's a great guy. He's the main caretaker for the kids. You know, he, he's the one who feeds them dinner every night. And so she really believes okay, maybe he would have left me, but he wouldn't have left the kids. He's a great dad. Mm. And so I wanted to tap into what that thought pre process is where at first she's like, oh yeah, he's definitely, something happened to him. Something terrible happened to him. Um, you know, he got in a car accident. He's in a ditch somewhere. Um, and then she gradually starts to think, or maybe not. And that's even more frightening for her because you know, what did he choose to put her daughter in danger by leaving her, her alone? And so there's all these other questions that start to come up for her as well. So was it harder to write that end part or the beginning part of telling the whole story and how it started? I think as a writer, I put, and other authors probably do as well, put mm -hmm. so much pressure on that first page. Um, and so mm -hmm. in that way, the start is always a challenge. But with, like I said, No Bad Deed, it just came to me. The first page, just I, the scene just kind of popped into my head, almost fully formed. Um, and so it was really easy. Um, once you have it on the page, it's like, it's, it can go anywhere. And I think at the end, that's much more difficult because you've already established the story, you've established the characters, and it should go to one inevitable conclusion that also surprises readers. And so that is the trick. And so it, it's kind of like it gets more narrowed and focused as the book progresses. And so the ending, you just, you just want people, you know, at that point, readers have invested, mm. you know, 250, 300 pages, and you want them to have a satisfying ending. Even though I didn't write it for readers when I was writing it, but when I was revising it, I definitely was revising it because of the book deal. So um, that was definitely more challenging to find. So the Heather, what do you want people to get out of this book when they are reading it? You know, I, I was thinking, what is the one thing? And I've, I was asked this, I think, a long time ago when I was first starting out, like, what do you want readers to say about your, why do you write? Mm -hmm. And um, I thought of like the best thing someone 
could say about my book. Like, what is the one thing that just makes me all warm and fuzzy inside? Um, and that is that, oh, I couldn't put it down. Yeah. I just, it was, you know, I don't, I, I've never been one of those people be like, I want it to be, I want it to win every award. I, I want the readers to connect with it in a way that keeps them turning the pages. And that is the one thing I hope they get out of it is that they finish it, they close it and they say, wow. That's pretty much. Well, I, I'm looking forward to reading it. And as we end, can you tell people where they can get the book, where they can find more about you, Heather, in general? Well, um, all the book links, social media links and stuff are on heatherchavez.com. So if you forget, it's an easy name to remember. Um, but I'm at, at on Instagram and Twitter as I am, I A M H R Chavez. And then as far as where to get the book, you can get it at wherever books are sold. Um, your local independent bookstore is always a good one. It's also on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, all the usual places. All right, Heather, thanks so much. Again, everybody listening to this interview, please go out and read this book. Again, No Bad Deed. It definitely sounds intriguing. I'm really excited to read it because I think, as you said, it's a page turner and you're not going to be able to put the book down. You probably just read it in a couple of hours and get it done uh, because that's how interesting it is. So Heather, thanks so much for coming on the program. Greatly appreciate your time today. Thank you. It was fun. <laughs>